All right, let's get this going. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my series of Ninjago review live streams, I suppose. In today's stream, we are taking a look at the Lego Ninjago movie. Uh, steering away from the show and taking a look at something completely non-canon, we have ourselves a review of the Ninjago movie. Really excited to get into this one today. You guys know I am quite a big fan of this film. It's a very controversial movie in the Ninjago uh, scene, but I really enjoy it. I thought it was a lot of fun. So what we're going to be doing here in case you guys are not, you know, aware of how these streams work, this is what our schedule looks like. We stream Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Central Time, with an episode review and a Q&A. We will update this day by day. If there's ever a day where I can't stream, I will let you guys know via my community tab. These streams usually run for about an hour. The review portion takes up uh, primarily the first 20, 25 minutes of the of the stream, and then we'll jump into Q&A stuff afterwards. Like I said, the Ninjago movie is very, very mixed in <laughs> terms of reception in the community. Um, a lot of folks do not like this film. Uh, I've always kind of had the opinion that uh, it's an actual decent movie, you know? It's definitely not perfect. I do have some issues with that. We'll jump into that later on. And essentially what we're going to be doing in this review is we are going to be letting the episode photos run in the background, or the movie photos rather, for this stream as we break down the plot, the good, the bad, and finally a score out of 10. Thoughts on Pokemon? Oh, I've got some thoughts on Pokemon, but we're going to be jumping into that later on in the stream. So if you want to hear my thoughts on all the new Pokemon announcements, be sure to stick around for that. We'll talk about that later. In the meantime, though, let's go ahead and break down this movie. <laughs> How long is the review? Uh, well, you'll find out right now. So in terms of the plot, we're not going to run down the entirety of the plot. I just have a brief like excerpt written up regarding the general plot of the film. I'm not going to break into nitpicky details until we actually talk about the good and the bad, which will be pretty soon, because in terms of the plot, I only have a couple of sentences. It makes the review a little shorter and a little bit more consistent with some of the other streams. So again, the review will still be about 20, 25 minutes long. Let's go ahead and get to it. So for my excerpt written up for the plot, I basically have here uh, Secret Ninjas versus Garmadon Lloyd messes up bad Needs to find a weapon to correct his mistake While making amends with his father along the way That's essentially the main plot of this movie And it's a pretty good plot at that Very different than what the original treatment for this movie was In case you guys don't know The original treatment for this film Was actually a time travel movie Where the ninja needed to go back in time To pre uh, prevent Garmadon from being bitten By a legendary snake That would eventually turn him evil So very different plot from what we had initially However, I still think the plot works, and that's basically all we're going to discuss in terms of the plot. I do want to break down the good and the bad now because I have quite a bit to say. So the Ninjago movie, I actually really enjoy. I've got a lot of good things written down. Uh, obviously, this isn't connected to the show. It's not canon in any way, shape, or form. Of course, the, the show eventually adopted the designs that we see in the movie, which uh, let's talk about those first. The designs themselves, I think, are fantastic. This is our first instance of the ninja actually receiving these redesigns and I really do like all of them. I think for the most part, the ninja look very good compared to their TV show counterparts, with the exception of Zane. I will say Zane is probably my least favorite ninja in this movie. He's definitely a lot different than what he is in the show. I think he's the most different out of all the ninja. I think he gets the biggest change here. In the movie, his robotic origins are kind of played more for laughs. I think that's cool. But overall, the designs themselves are very solid. These designs do carry over to the show, again, with the exception of Zane. Zane. Uh, Zane changes ever so slightly, but he is quite similar to the movie. Just, just a few differences here and there. But yeah, let's go ahead and discuss some more good, because I actually think the designs are really good. Again, kind of controversial opinion on my end, but I really love the redesigns. So the main thing that I want to talk about, the main plot of this movie, the main story element, is the dynamic between Lloyd and Garmadon. I think they have a very solid father-son relationship. It's a little rocky towards the beginning, but it gets progressively better as the movie advances. That's kind of the point of the movie, to showcase how these two characters can eventually reconcile and become a family once again. I actually really do like that uh, that that idea. It you know, it's relatable to a lot of folks. I thought I found myself relating to this movie a lot when it came out, and even nowadays I rewatch it for just that sense of relatability. I think it's really relatable in that way. Very depth, like very very deep in terms of, you know, nature. It's it's very 
I don't know how to describe it. It's not complicated, but it works. You know what I'm saying? It's very emotionally grabbing. It, it gets your attention, and I really do love that dynamic. It's very emotional as well towards the end. I really love the bit in the movie where Garmadon's origin is kind of explained and his falling out with Coco, Lloyd's mom, and what eventually led to their separation and what Lloyd is dealing with as a repercussion of that. Lloyd is dealing with a lot in this movie. He's very much excluded from his local scene at high school. Uh, the ninja are pretty much his only friends. I forgot to mention the ninja are in high school in this movie, which was another big change from the show. They actually do attend some type of school. It gives them around like a specific age. Lloyd is supposed to be 16 in this movie. They state that directly, so that's fun. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, Lloyd is very much excluded from that. He's an outcast. People just don't like him because of his dad. <laughs> his dad comes in and causes havoc on a daily basis, so much so that the Ninjago forecast even predicts it, almost like it's weather. <laughs> And I think that that works. I think Lloyd is very much excluded on purpose, and that makes him a better character. I like that a lot. I think Lloyd is a very well fleshed out character, and his relationship with his dad is just awesome. I need to talk about Garmadon for a little bit too. Garmadon's amazing, very much uh, humorous. It's a very humorous take on Garmadon, but I think it works. We kind of see Garmadon turning into this as the show progresses as well. He has that very sarcastic and snarky relationship with Lloyd, especially in things like March of the Oni, which I get really like you know similar vibes from. Uh, as I get with the Ninjaga movie. They have a very good dynamic. I love it. So, <laughs> a 13-year-old makes the news images. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I, I really love the, uh, I, I, I don't know, I just, I love the graphical designs of this movie. I think, I think it's awesome. But yeah, Garmadon I thought was amazing. I really loved Garmadon. Easily the best part of this movie for me, and I mentioned that in that, uh, in my initial review. So, <laughs> Garmadon totally carries the movie. I agree to an extent. I, I think Garmadon's a really big part of the movie, and he's a big part of what makes the movie good in my eyes. But again, that's not the only good part of this movie, at least for me. I have a lot more to talk about here. In terms of the other ninja, they're okay, I guess. Uh, we'll talk more about them when we get to the, to the bad section of the review. Um, but yeah, I thought the other ninja were there. They existed. They completely existed. They had all their super cool mechs. I thought that was fun. What am I drinking? Water. We got a water bottle today. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Garmadon's army was weird. Oh yeah, the shark army. Not the biggest fans of those guys, but they work. But going back to the ninja, yeah, they exist. <laughs> they're there to support Lloyd and kind of guide him on this emotional journey, which I think is a good role for them. They each have their own individual personalities, and that very much is made clear with how they're introduced. Each ninja has a very distinct personality, and uh, I think that works. I think they establish that really well. Unfortunately, the ninja really don't have that much screen time, and we will jump into that later on in the review as well. Some other characters that I want to talk about, Wu and Coco. I mean, Master Wu exists. He's voiced by Jackie Chan. Amazing casting. Absolutely nailed that. In terms of Coco, she's cool too. I mean, she's certainly uh, on par with Masako, I'd say, in terms of like the caring mother aspect. But I really loved, I guess, uh, Master Wu's involvement with the story as well. He's a mentor character. He's basically the physical physical embodiment of that role. Like the common stereotypical mentor character, he fits that role to a T, and I think that's intentional. I don't think that's a result of like lazy script writing or anything like that. I think that's just the role that they wanted for him in this movie, to be kind of like that character archetype in a nutshell. That character archetype is Master Wu in this film. So, why no Masako in the movie? I honestly don't know why they made that decision, because they completely changed Masako to a completely different character. Masako is not in this movie, instead we get Coco who I guess shares a little bit in common with Masako. Like I said, personality traits are very common between the two. You can definitely tell that they both take on that motherly role to Lloyd, but yeah, I'm not sure why they just didn't adapt Masako directly. That's, that's a change that I think is kind of weird, but I think it works. Like, Masako doesn't need to be in this film for it to work, but... Yeah, that, that role is kind of shared by the two. I wouldn't call them the same character. They're different characters, but they share that same role, I'd say. If they were the same character, why didn't you just call her Masako? You know what I'm saying? But either way, I liked Wu and Coco. I thought they were cool. In terms of action and, you know, fighting, I think this movie does that a lot. Uh, more so at the beginning. The fighting kind of dials down towards the middle of the film and then kind of picks back up towards the end. But the first 20 minutes of this movie are all pretty much action. The ninja are in their mechs. They're fighting with their, uh, well, with their mechs primarily. They get their powers towards the end of the film. Um, but no weapons. The ninja hardly use their weapons. Aside from a couple of, like, news broadcast footage pieces, uh, they use their weapons there. But the ninja's weapons that we see in the sets are pretty much uh, nowhere to be found. Instead, the ninja use their mechs to fight, and the mechs are awesome. I love all the mechs. With a few exceptions, I'm not the biggest fan of Jay's lightning jet, and I'm not the biggest fan of Zane's tank, but the other four mechs, I think, are fantastic. Uh, the mech designs are super cool in this movie, especially Garmadon's mech. I wish the set was just a little better, because Garmadon's mech has a really good design. So... 
Coco shirt from Masako. She's labeled as Masako in some of the sets. That's an identity thing then that the movie needs to figure out. If the movie wanted Masako to be Coco, then they should have just blatantly said that. To me, they seem like two completely distinct characters. If the sets say something, then fantastic. Uh, admittedly, the sets and the movie don't really have that much correlation. So to me, to me, in my mind, Masako and Coco are two distinct characters, but they fit that same you know motherly role to uh, to Lloyd, if that makes sense. If they wanted her to be Masako, they should have just called her Masako. If Coco is like a shortened name of uh, of Masako, like a shortened nickname, then I don't know why they never mentioned Masako at all. They never mentioned her full name. It was always, you know, Coco or some type of spin on that. I feel like I'm saying Coco a lot. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's confusing. I just dropped uh, a pen. All right, moving on. Yeah, the action's cool. I like the action. Yeah, they also have a very big, like, uh, change of design for Coco Masako. But, you know, going back to the action, it's cool, especially at the end of the movie when the ninjas get their powers. I think that's when the action picks up. Admittedly, towards the end of the movie, they do kind of jump into action right away, and that only lasts for like a minute. Each ninja kind of gets a little individual chance to shine uh, with their elemental powers, but then it kind of dials back a little bit. The ending is very, very spontaneous, very rushed. I will say that it's not the best ending ever that I've seen in a movie, but still, I thought it was decent for what we had. I also need to talk about the voice cast. We've talked a little bit about the characters but the voice cast in this movie is fantastic. Uh, the show voice cast is also very fun, but the movie cast, I think, works as well. I, I will say, I love the show cast more, obviously. The cast of the show is, like, you know, near and dear to my heart, but the movie cast is still fun. They had some pretty cool... Uh, I, I guess, actors playing some of these roles. Michael Pena as Kai, I think, works phenomenally. Uh, Dave Franco as Lloyd. Justin Theroux as Garmadon. Some of those are some of my favorite castings. I think they completely work. They took a lot of actors from different parts of film. Most of them come from comedy-focused stuff. There are a couple of actors in here, for example, from various sitcoms, such as The Office. So it makes, uh, makes a fair bit of sense that they would cast like comedic uh, actors in these more uh, comedic roles, I'd say. The Ninjago movie is very funny, and that's another thing that I want to talk about, too. The humor works as well well as with the voice cast. You can tell that the voice cast has very good chemistry. Uh, watching a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff for this movie, I could definitely tell that the cast themselves had a lot of chemistry with each other. They worked off of each other. A lot of the lines in here are very much ad-libbed, and you can very clearly tell. I think the actors have great chemistry with each other, and a lot of those ad-libbed ad lines they work. They're not in the script, but they work. Some of my favorite jokes in this movie, you could tell, weren't originally written, but they were just the actors having fun. And I thought that was really cool. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, music's good, too. I will say the music's fantastic. Some original songs for this movie are stellar. Uh, a lot of the music in the movie itself, though, like actual lyrics, uh, not super great. I found myself kind of cringing at some of the songs in this film, but, uh, but overall, the score is fantastic. And some of the other songs that exist outside of this movie are fantastic. The end credits are great, too. I love the song. Uh, found my place big a big success awesome song <laughs> i think nia is just a big flirt i don't know nia was kind of cool in this movie i liked her a lot more than nia in the show i'd say uh she's still confident but she's you know she's actually you know competent at the same time confident and competent so i thought that was cool we see nia kind of change uh with this as we go on or in the show as they go on uh, mostly came from my opinions at Diamond and Pearl. We'll talk about that here in a, in, a, in a little bit. I want to dedicate a section of the stream specifically for that. What else do I have in terms of the movie? Oh, the giant cat, of course, Meowthra. A lot of folks have said that uh, that my uh, my cat Waffle kind of looks like Meowthra, and I do agree. She does. She's sitting on the chair behind me. Uh, yeah, she she kind of looks like Meowthra, I'd say. I like the aspect of the giant cat, though. Kind of applied it to the real world. I thought it worked. The giant cat really doesn't play that big of a role in the movie. It kind of exists as a buffer between the ninja and the city. It exists as a way to cause tension in the city and make Garmin on win, while at the same time being a visual gag. I mean, the giant cat is hilarious. I love the bit where he takes down Jay's lightning jet. Awesome. Just fantastic. <laughs> Did I see the bloopers for the Ninjaga movie? Yeah, I, I've watched a lot of the behind the scenes stuff uh, for this movie, and I really like it. I've seen this movie a lot, watched it with commentary on it. I'd recommend that, too. If you guys have like the DVD or Blu-ray, I'd recommend watching this movie with commentary. You get to hear a little bit more of the behind the scenes stuff. You get to hear what the cast and the crew think about the movie and what developed into this movie. I, I'd highly recommend that. Very fun. Yeah, the giant cat was cool. A live action elements, they work with that as well. I will say, unlike the other Lego movies, this Lego movie takes a lot from the real world. When the ninja are walking through the jungle, it's not a Lego jungle. It's like an actual jungle. I thought that worked. It works better than some other Lego films. It makes me feel like this movie 
in the context of the real world could have been filmed in someone's backyard. It could have been, you know, set up like this movie takes place in someone's yard with all the jungle and foliage and stuff like that. I really like that. In terms of other live action elements, of course, you get Jackie Chan himself at the beginning of the movie. Uh, talking to this young kid, I really didn't care for that aspect. I enjoyed the message that was there. Uh, the kid, in a lot of ways, is supposed to be representing Lloyd and his feelings. But, I don't know, I, it didn't really work for me as much as some other Lego movie live action elements did. I think the first Lego movie is better in that regard. But still, this movie is still very fun. And in terms of very fun stuff, again, funny jokes. I like the jokes. This movie's funny. Some jokes land, some jokes don't. But uh, some of the subtle jokes, too, I think are great, especially when the cast is, again, like I said, ad-libbing their lines, making stuff up as they go along. It creates for a lot of funny jokes, I will say. <laughs> Master of vibe in the flute, for sure. Yeah, I enjoyed the Weekend Whip cameo, too. They kind of had that, like, right out the, right off the beginning of the movie, like Lloyd's phone rings and it's the Weekend Whip. I thought that was cool. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much going to wrap it up in terms of good stuff. I only have a couple of negative things to say about this movie, uh, ever so slightly. First of all, um, it is basically the Lloyd and Garmadon movie. If your name is not Lloyd or Garmadon, you basically have nothing to do in this movie. The other ninja are there, but they're not as prevalent, and that was one of my biggest criticisms of this movie when I saw it. The other ninja really don't have that much to do. Like, for example, like everyone has a different character arc. Like, Kai, for example, he's like the supportive, tough guy, best friend. I think that's cool. Cole is the mellow, relaxed kind of, you know, music loving guy. I think everyone's known someone like that in high school or throughout school. Uh, Zane's kind of like the awkward teen trying to fit in. Jay is the other awkward teen trying to fit in. Only he's a little more hopeless, I'd say. And Nia is the overly confident, you know, uh, super reliable girl. That's just, you know, great to have by your side. All of the ninja have personality. I just don't think that uh, they shine as much as some other characters, especially characters like Lloyd and Garmadon. I honestly think Coco has a lot more going on in this movie than some of the other ninja. So, um, yeah, I say, yeah, some of the show, like the, some of the seasons do that as well. But the movie, I kind of wanted the team to be a little more evenly balanced, I'd say. And Jay didn't even talk to Cole. Yeah, I think if the movie was longer, we could have had more moments like that. But the movie doesn't really need to be that much longer. I think it's a good length. It's like an hour 40-ish, I think. Uh, good runtime. Not too long, not too short. However, I would have preferred a couple of more moments with the other ninja. Uh, also, something that I do have in this film, kind of like a minor nitpick that I have with it, is uh, the reuse of shots. There's a lot of that going on. Uh, I'm not sure why they did that. Uh, for example, like this, the same shot with Kai in his fire mech, that's used in the movie throughout like a couple different points, and they redub it over with different dialogue. To me, it doesn't seem like it's a good decision. It almost seems lazy in a way. I'm not sure if that was just because Again, with actors ad-libbing lines, uh, you can't really animate that to their ad-libbed lines. You animate it based on what's said in the script and maybe go back and animate other things later on if you have a funny line that you want to include in there. They didn't do that. Instead, what they did, they wanted to include the ad-lib lines, but they didn't have enough footage, so they just reused footage. I think that's what happened with it. Um, I could be wrong with that, but to me, that's basically, in my mind, what happened. Again, I don't have an exact answer for that, but I just thought it was kind of obnoxious. Like, I'm very good at pointing out shots in movies that have been reused over and over again. Uh, going away from the Ninjago movie, uh, the Transformers movies, for example, they reuse a lot of shots in between movies, and I can tell when something has been reused. I have a good eye for that. Uh, ever since I was young, I've had a good eye for that. So, in the Ninjago movie, it kind of bothered me, triggered my OCD a little bit. Uh, definitely not uh, a good decision, at least in my own opinion. Also, some of the writing is a little awkward. I could tell that, again, they didn't know what to do with some of the characters. They wanted to include all of the ninja, but they didn't know how. I guarantee you if, you know, if they didn't include the ninja, the movie wouldn't change. <laughs> I think the movie would totally just, you know, be the same if they didn't include the ninja. I don't think the ninja do all that much in the movie, except for, you know, Lloyd to try to connect them together, which, you know, fun. They're connected. Now what? <laughs> I don't know, it just seemed a little awkward to me. Some of the writing choices were a little weird. But overall, this movie was very good. I love the Ninjago movie. I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite Lego film. I think the first Lego movie is still best. But in terms of how I would, how I would rank them, I'd say from best to worst, the original Lego movie, followed by the Ninjago movie, then the Batman film, and then the uh, the Lego movie 2. I'd say that. Pretty much in release order, except switch the Batman movie and the Ninjago movie. I love the Ninjago movie. I know it's very controversial in terms of an opinion, but I think the Ninjago movie is very good. It did a lot for Ninjago, did a lot for the brand. It did a lot to, I guess, present Ninjago to a bigger audience. Again, I've always said the fact that uh, that we've get that we got a Ninjago movie in general is just 
mind blowing. Ninjago was big enough for them to warrant releasing a theatrical movie based on that. No other Lego movie is based on like a specific theme, at least in terms of like theatrical movie, like the four movies that I mentioned, the four Lego movies that I mentioned. You could you could argue that Lego Batman's based on a specific theme, but I I would argue that that movie kind of carries itself on the idea of Batman alone. Uh, Ninjago itself doesn't exist outside of Lego, so I thought that was a really good accomplishment by the Lego team. And you know, with this movie, I thought it was really cool. I, I loved it. Um, yeah, definitely a treat to watch. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. I know some Ninjago fans kind of skipped on this movie, but I, I, I'd recommend watching it. If you can separate it from the show, if you can separate it from the mind of, of, oh, this has to be exactly like the show. If you can treat it as its own thing, I'd say it's fun. It's a fun time. In terms of a score, let's go ahead and score this thing up. I've basically said everything that I want to say. Uh, feel free to put some of your scores in the chat as well. In terms of a score for this movie, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for my updated score. You can see in my original review, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. That was when the movie came out. Rewatching it a few years later and, you know, reevaluating re my, uh, my feelings on it, I think it deserves a 9. I have issues with it. Not a perfect 10, but I will say a 9 out of 10, I think, is a very good score. But of course, it's just my opinion. Let's see what you guys have for scores in the chat. Some of you guys have already started. Thank you very, very much. I see a seven and eight, a couple sixes, a nine because the ending sucks. Yeah, the ending's kind of fast, like I said. <laughs> it's like, oh, we've defeated, uh, we've defeated everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's wrap things up. It almost felt like the ending was like over budget, so they had to cut it. Five out of ten, fair enough. A zero. <laughs> I know some folks that would give it a zero. Very mixed scores across the board. I'm seeing anywhere from zeros to tens. I think this is probably one of the most mixed properties that we've ever covered on this stream, or on these streams, rather. I think for the most part, I'm seeing a bunch of six and sevens. I think those are the most common scores from what I'm seeing in the chat. So, which is fair. I mean, critical reception of this movie definitely wasn't that great. I think it has like a 50-something percent on Rotten Tomatoes, if I'm not mistaken. People are very mixed on this movie. Uh, with the Ninjaga movie, from what I've seen throughout the community, it's either you love it or you hate it. One of the two. I love it. I think the movie is fantastic. Loved it when it came out. Love it four years later. Almost four years. More like three and a half, three and a quarter. Who knows? But yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for my review on the Lego Ninjago movie, my revamped review. Of course, we're not done with the stream yet. Got a couple of more things to talk about before we wrap things up. We still got about 30-ish minutes, 35-ish minutes left in the stream, so be sure to stick around if you want to hang out for the Q&A section. Otherwise, that's going to pretty much do it for my review of this movie. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about Sons of Garmadon, starting off with The Mask of Deception. We'll kick that off on Monday. It's currently Friday, so this is going to be the... Uh, the the last stream of the week for the time being but we will be back on monday with season eight in terms of other stuff why don't we jump into q and a and before anyone asks i want to talk about pokemon i know it's a ninjago based channel but i want to talk about pokemon i want to talk about this so pokemon i'm a big pokemon fan i love pokemon uh my favorite games in the series are diamond and pearl and it was announced this morning that we are getting remakes of diamond and pearl watching this direct this morning blew me away i was not expecting them to announce Sinnoh remakes but they announced them and it's like let's go i mean we're, we're getting Sinnoh remakes i'm so excited for the for these games now the games themselves i didn't need to say they look like very faithful remakes i've seen a bunch of people complain already about these i think these games are as faithful of remakes as you can get for um for diamond and pearl it almost looks like they ported diamond and pearl into the switch and that's that of course they updated the graphics it's a very chibiified game and i think that's what we're going to be getting for brilliant diamond shining pearl not a big fan of those names i will say but i am going to get both of them i'm a big Sinnoh fan i'm going to get multiple copies of this game play through it multiple times i love Sinnoh, and i can't believe we're finally getting remakes late 2021 so presumably november <laughs> that's probably uh what's gonna happen pokemon games normally release in november so i'm looking forward to that november is also my birthday month so usually i like to play pokemon on my birthday kind of like a you know a little tradition that i have normally new games come out in november so yeah brilliant diamond shining pearl not a big fan of those names but eventually they will grow on me in terms of the art style yeah it looks very much like a I don't know, like a chibiified version of it. I would kind of prefer something like what we saw with uh, with Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire with those remakes. Um, but still, I'm excited to see what Diamond and Pearl 
uh, has to offer in terms of these remakes. Very excited. I was not uh, not expecting this. <laughs> I was expecting something else. But uh, we we didn't only get this. We got uh, this Pokemon Legends Arceus releasing worldwide early 2022. This is pretty much as uh, as open world as you can get. Very much like uh, Breath of the Wild. I've seen a lot of comparisons to that. But still, people don't like this uh, because, again, oh, graphics are bad, yada, yada. I, I don't know. To me, this very much seems like, uh, like an open world uh, prequel game, kind of uh, setting the ground, if you will, uh, laying down the groundwork for Generation 9. I feel like when Generation 9 comes out, probably in late 2022 as well, maybe early 2023, uh, we can probably expect Pokemon to look like this from now on. Very much open world, very much like, um, you know, I, pretty much like Breath of the Wild, <laughs> Legend of Zelda. So uh, that's what a lot of people have been kind of uh, comparing this to. I think it works. In terms of starters, um, starters for Legends are kind of weird. You get Rowlet, you get Cyndaquil, you get Oshawott. Three starters that I love. I will say I love all three of those starters. I would choose them all in their own individual games, but I think this time I'm going to go with Cyndaquil. I think Cyndaquil is going to be my starter of choice this go-round. And it seems like you're kind of, you know, going around catching Pokemon, trying to make, like... I don't know, like the first Pokedex is what they kind of mentioned in the trailer, which I enjoy. It's still a Sinnoh-based game. So not only are we getting like faithful Diamond and Pearl remakes, we're also getting an entirely new like Sinnoh game at the same time. It almost feels like instead of making one game, they kind of split it up. They made a Diamond and Pearl remake, and they also made like a new game altogether, like a true remake, while also giving it a, an interesting spin. People have been wanting a Pokemon prequel for a long time. I think this absolutely nails that concept. And again, like I said, this is probably how Pokemon is going to look from now on with like open world stuff, uh, starting with Gen 9, I imagine. Why didn't they at least have one of the Sinnoh starters? I think that's just because we're getting like all three of them in the actual Diamond and Pearl remakes themselves. To me, it kind of makes sense. Again, like having a Sinnoh set game with like different starters, I'm okay with that, especially with Cyndaquil. Uh, in my mind, Johto and Sinnoh have a very solid connection, uh, probably because, you know, I got into Pokemon starting with uh, Gen 4, Diamond and Pearl, and Heart Gold, Soul Silver were also out in that generation. So to me, Johto and Sinnoh kind of have that connection. In terms of having Rowlet and Oshawa in there, not sure how to feel about that. I am probably going to be picking up Cyndaquil as my starter for uh, Legends Arceus. But hey, I really enjoyed this announcement for Pokemon. I thought this was fantastic. In terms of some criticisms and some complaints that I've seen, again, the Sinnoh remakes themselves, they don't look like they're going to be expanding the Sinnoh lore all that much. Uh, it looks like they're going to be basically very faithful remakes of the original, which is awkward. So uh, we already wrapped up the Ninjago movie review. It's all done, all good to go. So feel free to check out the beginning of the stream if you want to talk about that, or if you want to hear me talk about that. <laughs> Stop talking to Pokemon. I love Pokemon. This is a big deal for me. Uh, Diamond and Pearl were the games that I started on, and the fact that we're getting remakes of them, I'm excited. So I'm going to be talking about this for a second here. Um, But yeah, overall, though, Diamond and Pearl, I thought were pretty cool in terms of announcements. Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Excited for those. Again, very faithful remakes. Uh, probably not expanding the games as much as previous remakes, but that's just because we're getting the expansion with this. Uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Really enjoy that. So. <laughs> um yeah that's pretty much going to do it for my thoughts on pokemon I'm, I'm excited for pokemon man no one wants to listen to you talk about pokemon uh right in the chat right now do you want to hear me talk about pokemon <laughs> i'm sure some folks will say yeah and plus i love pokemon man this is the q a section of the stream we can do whatever we want here but yeah, I am I am wrapping it up though, all things considered. <laughs> Open world looked uh, looked empty. Yeah, the games are very much still um in development. Oh, I see a yes in there. Pretty much debunked the no one wants to hear me talk about Pokemon. <laughs> debunked that argument right off the bat. Um, but yeah, just to wrap it up, these games are still in development. I'm really excited for them. And uh, yeah, Pokemon is a big part of my life, uh, maybe even more so than Ninjago. Let's move on to Ninjago stuff, because some folks want me to start talking about Pokemon. Why don't we start with um, <laughs> Day of the Departed? <laughs> Jumping right off the bat. Um, I don't know, I like Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon's fun. But in terms of other stuff, what do you guys want me to uh, talk about? Because we, we got like a half hour left in the stream, so... I pretty much said everything I want to say about uh, about Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Remix. I'm excited for that. So, what else do you guys got going? I guess Season 14 is coming out soon. Rumored that we're going to be getting the French version later tonight or tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. 
Uh, probably not going to watch it, but I'll still get caught up with what happens because the English version is going to be coming out uh, next weekend. March 7th is going to be that uh, is going to be that release date, supposedly. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, in terms of season 14, though, looking like it's only going to be about four episodes long, which is expected. So, um, Chen's supposed to be in the show. Chen or does Skylar have a half brother? Uh, what is their character called? Chen in the, Chen in the movie or something? I'm not quite sure what that question's asking. I'm also dyslexic. Real talk. Uh, real talk. So sometimes I misread things. <laughs> uh, not like you know, not like making fun of dyslexia. I I genuinely have dyslexia. Uh, March of the Oni or the Ninjaga movie. In terms of what makes a better Ninjaga movie, I don't know. I think the Ninjaga movie works as a movie, but March of the Oni works better as like a movie for the for the tv audience it's like as tommy said when it came out it's like the ninjaga movie that fans of the show des- uh, deserve which i think is cool i think it works well as a movie too i just kind of prefer like the ninjaga movie um, i think march of the oni is really fun though a lot of fun so um the cheerleader bully oh was were they named chen <laughs> Maybe that's just a reference. They they referenced a couple of things in the movie. Forgot to mention that in the review as well. A couple of Easter eggs. Like for example, when they're giving out powers, Lloyd's like, "Oh, can I be can I be gold? Can I be wind?" Very uh, very obvious references there. In case you guys have been you know were fans of the of the show, so <laughs> gold referring to Lloyd's golden power, wind referring to Morrow. Thought that was cool. Speaking of Morrow, I um uh in terms of Morrow, I actually ordered. Uh, possessed Lloyd online should be here this weekend. Those of you guys that uh, have been keeping up with the streams as of late, you would know that I had initially sold off my uh, my possessed Lloyd figure a while ago, and I want it back. I found it online for a very cheap price, so I nabbed it, and it's going to be here later today or tomorrow. I'm not sure yet. I'm excited for it though. Favorite '80s movie? Oh, one of the classics is Back to the Future. <laughs> I think that's genuinely a classic 80s movie. When I think of 80s movies, that's like the first one that I think of. Um, Do we go to college if you do have any of my friends on your channel? Uh, The friends that I have do know of my channel. Um, I've recently been catching up with a couple of older friends from high school. Didn't really make a lot of friends when I was in college. Right now I'm in the process of transferring because of prices and COVID and whatnot. So we're, we're, we're transferring, um, working on my degree. So that's about that. But yeah, I do have friends that know of my channel. Uh, my first subscriber was uh, someone who I considered to be my bestest friend. So uh, he was supporting me all the way back then, and uh, he's been around for every milestone congratulating me and the channel. So it's been nice. Uh, he's a genuine good guy. Hunted or Sons of Garmadon? Or Hunted's better than Sons of Garmadon? Uh, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I would disagree with that notion, though. I would say that Season 8 is better than Season 9. Just my opinion. What degree am I getting? I was going for a degree in writing or film studies. That was kind of what I was aiming for. However, I was, you know, thinking about transferring. Uh, my advisor suggested that maybe I should switch up my uh, degree a little bit and maybe go for something like marketing. So I don't know. I'm thinking about doing that. I think I could be good at like a marketing career. I'm not sure yet what I want to do. I want to do something with writing though. I love writing. Writing is one of my favorite things. It's a good hobby. It's a good hobby to get into you know, advances your writing skills. Season nine is boring. I wouldn't say it's boring as much as it's, you know, not as, uh, not as consistent as season eight. And I think that has to do with the multiple storylines going on in Hunted. You got two storylines going on at once. It's kind of hard to balance those. Thoughts on legacy figures? Do you want them to be more accurate to the old minifigures? Or do you like them being different? I think it's good that they're different. I think for the most part, legacy figures, especially in terms of villains, I think if they update them to fit like the modern aesthetic of Ninjago, I think that works. Um, like with the legacy ninja, for example, I never really wanted them to be like direct copies of the original figures. They are pretty much what I exactly what exactly I wanted them to be, if that makes sense. They're updated and different, but in a good way. You can still tell that they're trying to you know, remake the same, I guess, feeling, the same vibe of the originals, if you will. But I think they're a lot better in that regard. They're definitely updated for the modern day, and a lot of the uh, a lot of the legacy figures are better than the originals, I'd say. Especially with, like, the tournament figures. I think, like, the tournament style, like the Legacy 2 suits for Ninjago Legacy are awesome. Phenomenal. Um... <laughs> Nia gets a golden weapon in season 10 when Kai didn't forge it for her. 
<laughs> yeah, she kind of used the side of the quakes for a minute. But, you know, they're trying to reforge the original four golden weapons. I doubt that they would forge one for Nia. Don't like the Legacy 1 ninjas? That's fair. They're very simple. Uh, I don't think they're all that bad. I think they're they're reused a lot. <laughs> I think uh, we'll switch over to March of the Oni so I can kind of talk about this. The Legacy 1 suits are reused a lot in Ninjaga. They've been used since the beginning of 2019, and they're still going to be used in the summer wave of this year, 2021. So they've been in circulation for about two years now, and I have a lot of these figures. Mainly Kai. I have a lot of Legacy 1 Kais. Discord for this channel are so rude to me. I'm not in the Discord so much. Like I, I try to be in there as frequently as I can, but most of the time I'm working with uh, with videos and doing other stuff. I try to be in there the most I can, though. Sorry, the experience wasn't super great. I feel like if I was in there more often, it would be a little more, I don't know, a little bit better. I know that there's a little bit of controversy with uh, with some of the decisions made in the server, but I try my best. I'm just super busy with other stuff most of the time, at least. Um, how do I think the show would have been different if the movie didn't happen? I think the designs would not would not change. I think the designs nowadays would be the exact same that we had seen. I think the movie came out, and the main reason as to why the designs changed in the show um, was because of uh, the movie coming out. They wanted to bridge the gap between the movie and the show, so they just changed all the designs. But I think it works in the show as well. I just don't think the designs would have ever changed if the movie was you know, never a thing. Have you seen the new WandaVision episode? Yeah, I, I've seen it. I thought it was really good. I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not going to spoil the new WandaVision episode or anything like that. But I just thought it was a lot better than some of the previous episodes. I was actually invested with it. So that's fun. I was hoping for a better episode than the last two, and I got what I was wanting. At least in my opinion, it's good. I know for the most part, every WandaVision episode that's come out has been received uh, really well. I just didn't really care for the last two episodes. Thankfully, this one that came out, well, today is, uh, you know, it's it's good. I like it. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything here. All I want to say is that it's good and I liked it. And that's about it. Um, Do I think they should meld the old designs and the new designs soon? Like combine them together? I think that could be interesting. Um, A lot of folks thought that that's what they were going to kind of do. <laughs> like for example when uh when season eight was kind of announced to be changing the designs a little bit um what what came out and what the community ended up thinking was that the ninja would use their same faces as before but would just update the hair pieces so for example it would be like kai's uh season uh pilot through seven face with his movie hairstyle that's what people thought they were going to be doing but evidently they just changed the entire designs together. Like I said, I think for some ninja, it works as like an older version of their past self, uh, pretty much for everybody except Jay. I still don't think Jay's uh, new design is like a good representation of his older self. I don't think that at all. He looks younger, but I think I would be okay with that if they had like the older faces with like the movie hair. I think that would work out. Did you hear about the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remake? Yeah, we were talking about that earlier in the stream. We just kind of switched over to talking more about general Q and A stuff. So, uh, again, if you want if you want to hear me talk about like anything specific in this stream, the stream when it's done, you know, being live, will be updated as an actual video on the channel. So uh, it'll be uploaded in full when it's all said and done. So if you ever want to rewatch streams or you know skim through and uh, hear what I have to say about a specific topic, feel free to do just that. They'll be up at the end of the, at the, when the stream is done, they'll be up as videos. So it's also good if you guys ever miss a stream and you, if you want to check out what I have to say in that specific stream, you can always rewatch it back. It's always fun. Uh, best new Ninjaga design? Probably Cole. <laughs> you should do a Pokemon channel. I had one at, at one point. I was just never really active on it and I decided to uh, get rid of it. But I did have one at some point. I just figured it would be too much work trying to balance Pokemon and Ninjago on an actual channel. That's why I kind of keep like Ninjago oriented topics on YouTube while over on my other social media, I, I'm kind of, you know, expansive, uh, reaching out towards other franchises and stuff that I like. So why don't I do a watch party stream and then delete it when it's done? Because Lego can detect it when it's live. Like if you guys were around for my 10 hour stream, you saw that we got taken down. <laughs> um, uh, like midway through that because of like copyrighted stuff. I would totally love to do watch parties with uh, with you guys on stream. Unfortunately, Lego and YouTube, they just don't allow that kind of stuff. Can my roommate say hi? Uh, I don't think she's here. She might be sleeping still or somewhere else. I know she was up until like 5, 6 a.m. So like I was up until like 4 and then went to bed and woke up at 8 for the Pokemon announcement. So I've only been up for like, or I've only slept for like four hours. So. 
yeah like lego isn't like fun to like work with online like i don't know it's that's why i don't use footage in my videos either make another channel for watch parties i could do that but the channel would probably be gone very quick <laughs> like if one uh if watching one like ninjago episode on stream gets me a warning eventually it's going to be like oh we can only watch three episodes and then the channel goes down then we need to make another channel do three episodes on that and then it goes down you know it it's just going to be a, a mess so i opt to not do watch parties uh you know in Something else that we could do, though, is, like, not show it on screen. Like, I could just watch it on my own separately while streaming, you know? And uh, <laughs> you guys could follow along watching the, the, the episode yourselves. That's probably the most realistic way we could do it if we wanted to do that. But, I don't know, that, to me that just seems boring. It, it would just seem like commentary, you know? Uh, does my roommate like like Ninjago or not? She likes some of the characters, but she's not like super big into Ninjago. At one point, I would love to uh, you know show her the entirety of the series, but it's a very long series, and we're watching other stuff right now. So uh, hopefully one day we'll watch it. Otherwise, she likes some of the characters. Like she loves Garmadon. She has her own Garmadon figures and stuff like that. So uh, she also is you know she likes Lego. She has a couple of Lego sets herself. Could I play the audio? Probably not. That's probably gonna get picked up too. Like any copyrighted images aside from, or any copyrighted footage aside from, like you know, like images and stuff like that, that's going to be picked up by by Lego's copyright bots like almost immediately. <laughs> uh, does she like Pokemon? She does. She doesn't know a whole lot about Pokemon, but she she likes it. You know. Uh, do I like more Serpentine being in twenty twenty one? It's it's kind of mixed to me right now. I think they're unique in terms of snakes, but at the same time, it's like oh, it's snakes again. <laughs> I did a video this morning talking about that. I think the video is called Dirty Eels is what I called it. <laughs> uh, kind of like a little experiment for videos as well. I want to see how that video does compared to uh, normal uploads. I'm, I'm experimenting with my thumbnails and titles. So if you haven't checked out that video yet, feel free to do it and tell me what you think. For the most part, the video is the exact same. I just switched up like the title and the thumbnail just to see how that would work. Um, all 2011 spinners what do you mean by that like do i have all of them i do not i have a lot of them but not all of them i want to collect them all at some point do you think charizard is overrated I i'd say so i don't think he's as cool as people make him out to be so yeah i, I like mega charizard x though like that's cool i like the image i chose thank you yeah dirty eels pretty much in th pretty much in the thumbnail they're eels, not snakes. Yeah, I talked about that in my video this morning. Kind of discussed how they're most likely connected to eels. At the same time, it's like a snake-like villain again. So that'd be like, um, what's a good analogy? That'd be like if you had like elephant villains in Ninjago for like multiple seasons on end, and then you switch it up and it's like, oh, it's okay. It's mammoth this time. You know, it's like the same thing. It's like, it doesn't change all that much. But it is different, but it doesn't change all that much. So close to 100k, congrats. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're slowly making our way there. Slowly but surely. I'm hoping to reach that goal probably by April. April or May. If I could hit 100k at the same time that I release my uh, my screenplay, I think that'd be cool. That'd be like a nice 100k special, you know, reading the screenplay and showing you guys what I've actually completed. Because we're still working on that, and that's going to be coming out around May. I want to release it around May, I think. So a few more months of work on that. Admittedly, it is taking longer to, you know, write the screenplay than I had anticipated. But at the same time, I'm doing a lot of other stuff during the day too, um, working on videos for like eight to nine hours a day. Uh, it's it, it sounds like fun, but it it does get uh, tired after a while. Um, do I have any advice for anyone that wants to do what I do in terms of being like a Ninjago YouTuber? I'll give a couple of pieces of advice, and this is kind of like the advice that I give out when anyone asks that. Yeah, we could totally switch to seasons eight and nine because they're kind of lumped together if you guys are interested in starting up a ninjago channel i would recommend um you know being consistent with your uploads like actually make it like a hobby you don't have to do what i do where like you know you don't have to upload three videos a day even if you just do like one a week or once every couple of days as long as you're consistent with it and you don't have like large gaps in between your uploads your channel is going to be growing a lot more frequently as opposed to if you only upload like once every couple of months 
So um, I'd recommend doing that. In another piece of advice, I would recommend uh, joining various Ninjago communities, joining various Discord servers. Don't like advertise your stuff. Don't like drop your link or whatever and be like, hey, uh, this is my channel. Come check me out. Try to get involved with your community. You know, try to get invested in the in the community and get your name out there just by being an active community member. I think that's a good way to go about it. It's kind of like advertising, but you're also, you know, like being involved with the community. Be involved. Get updated on like recent events. Make videos on recent events. Cover the news even. That's a good way. Like people love news. Um, try not to be super like drama heavy, I guess. I know like people like in terms of like hum humanity, people love drama. People love controversy. Try not to get invested in that though. I just think that makes you come off as like a really desperate YouTuber if you only cover like drama. Just my opinions. But yeah, try to be active, get your name out there in that way, and just don't like blatantly go into other people's chats or comments and be like, guys, come check out my channel. I've got a channel too. You know, that's that's a that's not a good way of advertising. <laughs> just be involved in the community. That's pretty much the best that I can say. And have fun with it. Don't treat it like a job. If it becomes your job eventually, then fantastic. Like that's what I do right now. But I never treated YouTube as a job when I, you know, started things out. I treated it as a hobby because it was a hobby. I liked making videos. I liked talking about Lego and Ninjago and pretty much everything in between. So that's what I did. And it's going to take a minute. Like your channel's not going to like explode right away unless you're like super like lucky or if you get shouted out by another YouTuber or whatever. But if you want like to become like a like an like an actual YouTuber with integrity, uh, you're going to have to be patient because it's not going to blow up right away. You know, I was doing videos for what, like since 2013 and my channel didn't really start getting like actual subscribers until like 2017. So it was like four years. <laughs> Don't overwork yourself. I'm trying not to. I think for the most part, um, I have a pretty consistent schedule, I'm, like working eight hours a day. I think that's appropriate for an actual job. So like YouTube is my job. I treat it like a job. I work with it like for eight hours a day, you know, like a normal job during the week. So, you know. Any advice for being a ninja? <laughs> Don't make a super colorful suit. That's where these ninjas are messing up. You can see them coming a mile away. If you want to be stealthy, you, you make a black suit. Maybe even a very dark gray. Um, thanks for the advice. Yeah, I, I try my best. I know that a lot of people email me and message me asking for advice, and I kind of give the same thing every time, like the same, the same piece of advice. It's going to take a minute for... um for me to respond to a bunch of messages though i do apologize like, like let me take this opportunity to formally apologize i have not been uh responding to messages as frequently as i used to like i used to respond to emails and messages a lot but i'm kind of been slowing down as of late i've just been kind of tired with other stuff again like i said i'm very busy in my personal life too outside of youtube um but yeah just uh you know apologies if you guys have sent me messages and you haven't heard anything back um, am I scared about uh, my relationship with Lego because of my 10 hour live stream? I don't really have a relationship with Lego. Like I'm not like in the ambassador network or anything like that. I'm not like, I don't work under Lego. The only thing that I have in relation to Lego is I collect it. And that's about it. I don't work like directly under Lego in a lot of ways. I don't really have a relationship with the company <laughs> because it's not like I'm going to be sponsored by them. Lego doesn't really give out sponsorships to my knowledge. Uh, the Lego ambassador network is like the best way for online influencers to get uh, sets for free and review samples of products. I know a couple of people that do that. Um, I've never signed up for that. And even if I did want to sign up for it, I guarantee you I would not be accepted, <laughs> which uh, it, it is what it is. In a lot of ways, it's like, I don't know, I, there's been a little bit of controversy in like the Lego community lately. Let me just talk about that really quick. We'll change up, we'll change up images as well. Uh, we'll do the pilots for a little bit. So in terms of controversy within the Lego scene, the Lego Ambassador Network recently let go of a couple of YouTubers, which I thought was interesting. Um, the YouTubers themselves were uh, were kind of, um, you know, responsible for leaking out information that shouldn't have been leaked. And that's not really a good thing to do if you're part of the Ambassador Network, where you, if you're part of the Ambassador Network, you basically have to play by Lego's rules. You don't have as much freedom as you normally would just being like a regular YouTuber, I suppose. Um, so yeah, you got to be very careful with that. And they were let go because of that, which it's good and bad. It's, it's bad because again, you don't get like supported by Lego directly. You don't get sent free sets to review on camera or anything like that. Um, but at the same time, you get a lot of, uh, you get a lot more freedom. 
yeah, Emondar. I, I'm not a big fan of the guy. I, I don't like him. I think he's super obnoxious and arrogant, whatever. But, uh, but at the same time, it's like, you know, now at least he has some type of freedom. He can make content that he wants to make without, um, you know, being influenced by Lego directly. I think it was a dumb decision what he did being part of the ambassador network. I don't think he should be upset about the ambassador network's decision to remove him. But at the same time, it's like, well, now you got a bunch of freedom. So at the end of the day, who cares? You're just not getting sets for free anymore. And you don't like work directly with Lego. So, you know, (laughs) that's what I would like to do. Like I would totally like sacrifice giving up like free sets if it meant that I could do whatever I want on this channel. So that's pretty much my stance on that. I like the freedom that I have. I don't really want to work directly with Lego or under Lego. I think their copyright system is abysmal, and you guys have heard me talk about that a lot before, too. Uh, ben with a 199 donation. Thank you very much. Uh, have you played any of the Batman Arkham games? I have not. However, I do have some of them downloaded on my PlayStation uh, that I want to play eventually. I just have not played any of them yet, but I do have a couple of them downloaded. I'm not sure which ones I have, <laughs> um, but I know I do have some, so... Thanks for the donation, Ben. You're awesome. And I hope I was able to answer your question. Do I still have the 2015 Destiny's Bounty? Nah, I sold that one. I sold that one off. I I like the other bounties more. Like, once the movie bounty came out, I was like, well, I really don't have any use for this thing. Um, Am I going to watch season 14 tomorrow? I'll probably watch a little bit of it, if we're being realistic. I'm not sure how much of it I'll watch, if I'm going to watch the whole thing or not. If it has English subtitles, I'll probably watch a little bit. Otherwise, I don't speak French, so it's going to be a pretty interesting experience if I watch it without subtitles or any context. Um, But yeah, I'm probably going to wait to review them until the English release, which should only be about a week from now. So it's not that big of a deal. Is Waffle in custody for the massive city damage? Uh, she, uh, she, she's just sitting on the chair. <laughs> we, uh, we have like a little cat carrier that we put him in when they're when they're bad sometimes. So, um, yeah, that's that. But no, she really didn't mess up my uh, my city gardens that much. She just like chewed on one of the pieces, which I also don't have an extra for. So, probably gonna have to order what uh, order one online, which of course isn't fun, but hey, whatever works. Waffle doesn't know any better. She is a cat. She very much is Meowthro. Thoughts on pineapple pizza? I like pineapple on pizza. I know it's a controversial and unpopular opinion, but I don't care. I think pineapple on pizza is awesome. Uh, Hawaiian pizza is one of my favorites. Uh, season 8, Harumi said they found Masako after she found Wu. Yeah, I'm going to have to rewatch Season 8, which I'm going to be doing next week, because <laughs> I completely forgot about that. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a, it's gonna be fun to rewatch Sons of Garmadon. It's been a minute since I rewatched that, too. So uh, apologies if I get anything wrong or miss something but we'll be watching that next week i'm excited to talk about season eight again pineapple pineapple and pizza's bomb he knows what i'm talking about <laughs> um buy another city gardens and sell it in five years i get about a thousand dollars for it yeah or i could you know just save up money normally and not spend three hundred dollars right now so i don't know i i've never been a big fan of like buying sets and then selling them off later. I sell off sets that I have that are used that I don't want anymore. So I either sell them or take them apart because eventually I'm going to run out of space. Like right now, my uh, my studio is pretty much uh, full in terms of capacity. All of my shelves are full. I don't really have space for anything else. So um, what season 14 set should you get? Uh, if you can get it, I recommend getting the Keeper's Village. I think that's the best one. Otherwise, the Jungle Dragon looks cool, too. Yeah, hopefully those sets are going to be coming out soon. Only a couple more days to wait on those, and then I can officially buy them, which is going to be fun. Fire Temple set or Underworld set? I always kind of prefer to the uh, the Fire Temple, as opposed to, like, Garmadon's Dark Lair or whatever. Whatever that original set was called. Garmadon's Fortress. Favorite pizza topping? <laughs> Honestly, probably pineapple. Uh, I really enjoy pineapple pizza. Otherwise, like with pizza and burgers, I I, I just get everything. Like I, I get the works on that. With burgers as well, I, I get everything on there. You get that the mushrooms, the onions, tomatoes, lettuce, pickles, everything. I want everything. Same thing with pizza. I don't think pizza has a bad topping. I don't like uh I don't like anchovies, <laughs> but everything else is good. 
should resell Lego. That's kind of why I want to get like a degree in marketing as well. Cause I feel like I'm already kind of doing that. Like, especially with YouTube, you kind of need to have a little bit of skills with marketing, I suppose it's in the job, you know, like trying to advertise your content out, I, I guess it's not the same thing, of course, as like an actual marketing job, but you know, it, it's, it's a start. I'd say it's a start. Uh, we can run season 11 pictures until the end of the stream, which is going to be in a few minutes. We're almost done with the end. Uh, let's turn it over to rapid fire questions. Um, anything that I can answer in just a quick sentence or two. If you were to change the movie, what would I add or take out? I would add more scenes with the ninja, like the other ninja besides Lloyd. I would add maybe like a couple of uh, key character moments, maybe give them more speaking roles. I think Cole only has like 10 speaking lines in the movie, and I think I'm being generous by saying only 10. <laughs> Um, I would definitely do that. What happens to what happened to Zane's sixth sense? I like to think it's still around in a way, but I think they're kind of dialing it back. Like he still is able to sense incoming doom, like with the season eleven visions and all that kind of stuff. I just think they're dialing back on that a little bit. Favorite pro hero from my hero? Um, I don't know. I've kind of been liking Endeavor more and more. I feel like right now his arc in the manga is really tragic. <laughs> I know Endeavor is like a bad dude, but. I kind of like his character. I like his arc. Uh, is there one ninja you have every minifigure for? I think for all the ninja, I'm missing like a couple of those like random spinner figures, like the Spinjitzu Masters or the Dragon Masters or whatever. I don't think there's one ninja that I have every figure for. I have every Ninjago figure in terms of show accuracy right now. But uh, in terms of some of those other spinner sets, yeah, missing some of those. But I don't really have any intention to get those because to me, they don't count. Stream is shorter than I thought since it's the movie stream. No, nah, my plan was to always have it be the same length. I wasn't going to run down the entire plot of the movie. We'd be here for a while. I want to keep all my streams like a very consistent length, like an hour to like an hour four. Have I seen Demon Slayer? Yes, I have. I don't think it's as hyped as other people are making it, but I don't know. I, I thought it was good. Not great, but good. Haven't seen the movie, though. Um... Do I think the Ninjago movie changed Ninjago for the better? I think in terms of the designs, yeah. I think all the new designs are a lot more fresh than, than the old ones. The old ones were kind of getting, well, old. I like the newer designs. So, I think it did a lot. I think it changed it for the better. Ninjago movie or Lego movie 2? Uh, we're going Ninjago movie. The Lego movie 2 is probably my least favorite uh, Lego movie that exists right now. Do I think the season 15 suits could have reused the Prime Empire masks? Absolutely. I did a video, I think, last night it went up. I did it a few days ago, but last night I uploaded a video, I think, talking about that very same thing. It's been scheduled for a while, but I think it just went up last night. But yeah, they totally could have done that. I feel like the Prime Empire suits, if you take them away from the context of video games, they could work as, like, underwater scuba suits. So... Reviews were 150 record on stream. I don't think it's a record. We had a lot of people in here for the uh, for the 10 hour uh, stream. I will say this stream has gotten more, I guess, live viewers than previous streams. I think that's just because it's the Ninjago movie. I feel like it's uh, it opens it up to a larger array of people. Uh, will I do any more cahoots? Probably not. I mean, my Kahoot account's completely messed up, and uh, it turns out you have to pay if you want to get it back, which uh, I'm not gonna pay for Kahoot, so we're probably not gonna be doing Kahoot. What do I think of the ninjas having harpoon guns? I think it works. I mean, it's not like they were going to be able to use, like, shurikens underwater or nunchucks. So, <laughs> harpoons works. Um, New Season 15 Water Dragon or the Legacy Fire Dragon? That's actually a difficult decision, because both the dragons are amazing. I think the Water Dragon is just a little more elegant, though. It's a little bit more unique as well. We've seen Fire Dragons before. Uh, this Fire Dragon looks awesome, but uh, the Water Dragon just looks a little bit better. I like the harpoons. I think they work. How did Garmin kill Mustake? Uh, we don't know because uh, he killed her off screen. But I can only imagine it uh, didn't go well for Mustake. I thought that was a, an interesting turn. Again, Ninjago seasons 8 and 9 are very dark. I'm excited to rewatch them again. Um, Can I make an updated video of the saddest moments in Ninjago? I could. I could write that down as a potential idea. I'm just not sure if any, like, uh, newer scenes are going to be in there. I know one scene in particular that will definitely be in there. Did I already do the saddest moments, though? I'm not sure. I'll write it down just in case. I can't remember if I recently remade that or not. I'll write it down, though. Let's answer one more question before we wrap things up for the stream. We just need one more 
Uno mas, one more. <laughs> um, let's see, we gotta get a really good one in for the last question, y'all. We can answer that, because it kind of talks about the movie as well. Um, if Lloyd was not the main ninja of the movie, who would it be? I have no doubt in my mind that if Lloyd was not the main character, it would totally be Kai. I think Kai was like the main character by default for Ninjago for a while until Lloyd came in. But Lloyd was always going to be the main character of the movie, let's be real. But if it wasn't Lloyd, then totally Kai. So, that's going to pretty much do it for the stream today. This is our schedule, in case you guys need it. We stream Monday through Friday at 12pm to 1pm Central Time, with an episode review and a Q&A. Updating day by day. If there's ever a day where I can't stream, I'll let you guys know. In terms of the end of the stream tradition, we can uh, spam hug in the chat. You guys know how that works, in case you guys don't. We end off streams by spamming the word hug in the chat. It's good for community morale, and you know, it, it helps everyone. You know, you're not alone in this. Everyone here is hugging each other. Big group hug. So, works for that. But yeah, that'll pretty much wrap it up for the stream for today and the streams for this week. It's Friday, last stream of the week. Uh, it's all done. Um, I will see you guys on Monday. We will start up our Sons of Garmadon reviews next week, Monday. Be sure to tune in if you want to check those out. Otherwise, that'll pretty much do it for today's stream. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed talking to you guys about the movie and Pokemon stuff, of course. Um, check out the channel for a couple of more uploads today and especially this weekend with season 14 coming out. Probably going to be a couple more uploads regarding that, but I will see you guys next weekend or next week for more streams. Next week, Monday, we're going to be returning. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Thanks a lot for checking this out, hanging out, being cool, being a fun audience. And hopefully you guys have a fantastic weekend. I will see you guys on Monday and that'll pretty much do it. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you then. Peace.